the two theories under descriptive model is theory of reasoned action we call it as tra and theory of planned behavior tba so first is theory of reasoned action what does this theory says theory of reasoned action means that according to this theory people behave in a very rational and logical manner so the whatever is logically correct or rationally correct people are likely to behave that ways so this is what tra says for for example you go to a party now start from the backward to the beginning so you can see the diagram here in the last it is behavior so let's say you go to this party and you start talking to people in this party now you are socializing you're talking to all these important people in the party this is your behavior now it comes to the question why you are behaving in such a manner your intention your intention is leading to a certain behavior so what is the intention the intention is that you know that these people are important for my business i have to build up the network if i go and socialize with all these people it is going to profit my company or my business so that is your intention of growing your network of growing your business so hence this intention is leading to the behavior now from where does this intention comes from it comes from two things one is your attitude and second is subjective norms attitude means that you know what is your attitude your personal feelings your thought process maybe i feel that i have to succeed in life i have you know all the positive feelings that i want to grow in life i want to earn lot of money so this if i'll if i'll be successful it will be good for me i will be very happy i will be able to buy a you know good house nice luxury car and so on so this is your attitude because of your attitude this has led to a certain kind of an intention second is subjective norm subjective norm means that what others would think of you what the society will think of you if you are going to you know be successful if you are going to think that way if you are going to uh, uh, socialize with these people in the party your family people your friends your relatives all will think that you have a good attitude that you are you know you're wanting to succeed in life you are not a lazy person and you're doing the right thing so society appreciates someone who is running after the success who are not lazy who just don't waste their time and you know you make the use of their time they are using it productively so society likes that thing so according to subjective norms you're doing the right thing according to your attitude this is what your intention is so here the attitude and the subjective norms together makes an intention so that is the intention that you want to build up your network hence this intention is leading to a certain behavior that you are mingling your socializing with all the people in the party so this is the whole thing is logically and you know if you do the reasoning it seems all nice and good and correct so this is what theory of reasoned action is tra what are the limitations of tra theory of reasoned action the limitation is that it is very simplistic in nature and that it simply says that a certain intention is going to lead to a certain kind of behavior so this is a prediction of somebody's behavior how can we predict a person's behavior by knowing their intention so this is too simplistic in real world things might not happen like this maybe i have a certain kind of an intention or an attitude but i am behaving altogether very different so why is it happening it should be 100% correct then but it is not happening like that so tra has its own limitations that it is too simplistic and sometimes we do not behave as per our intentions so we cannot predict the behavior on the basis of intention that is when after 10 years came in a new theory that is theory for of planned behavior what is theory of planned behavior theory of planned behavior came 10 years after the tra when you know we realized when the psychologist realized that everything cannot depend upon the intention and behavior otherwise all the behaviors would have become very predictable that we can always predict the behavior on the basis of intention but that was not happening there was this third factor now here if you see in the diagram the whole diagram is exactly the same of tpb as that of tra only one factor has been added that is perceived behavior control 
so let's say i'll give an example to make you understand i was giving you an example of a party now your attitude is good that yes you want to grow your you know network your business it's a good attitude the society also agrees to it and admires people who are you know into success and who are making an effort who are hard working so it the so sub- subjective norms are also perfectly fine now what is perceived behavioral control let's say you think you are very shy and you think if i go in the party what will people think of me maybe i'm not looking that good or maybe you know i'm i'm looking too dull or maybe if i speak i may you know start to stutter or maybe when i speak people laugh at what my ideas and maybe they don't like me or maybe they criticize so basically what is uh, you know perceived behavioral control where you feel that you cannot uh, start the action you cannot make that action or control the action so maybe you know because of whatsoever reasons you are not able to carry out the action because of your emotions your other thought processes your other problems that you have inside you because of that the control action is not being carried out that is a perceived control behavior that can also lead to not going into the behavior so maybe you don't end up going to the party at all or you know you maybe the attitude was correct your subjective norms were leading to the intention still you did not carry out the behavior you did not carry out the behavior you did not go to the party because you were having self low esteem self low self confidence or some kind of you know um, hesitation or shyness that is the reason you did not go so this is a theory of planned behavior which is the actual one because this is in a real scenario it is not based only on the logical thinking that this should happen and this is how you know behavior is conducted on the basis of intention no there are other lot many other factors and it is more complicated in the real world so that is why theory of planned behavior is the right one which usually is carried out So here, let's do the TPB is comprised of six constructs that collectively represent a person's actual control over the behavior. The very first one is attitudes. So basically, this refers to the degree to which a person has a favorable or unfavorable evaluation of the behavior of an interest. It entails a consideration of the outcomes of performing the behavior. So basically, it's your own attitude, uh, whether it's uh, favorable or if it's unfavorable. What is your interest like? second is behavioral intention this refers to the motivational factor that influences a given behavior where the stronger the intention to perform the behavior the more likely the behavior will be per- performed for example going to the gym so more is your intention of losing the weight that yes i have to lose weight no matter what so your intention is very very strong so more are the chances that you will land up in a gym and you won't miss a day third is subjective norms this refers to the belief about whether most people approve or disapprove of the behavior it relates to a person's beliefs about whether peers and people of importance to the person think he or she should engage in the behavior now for example let's say um, you really really want to eat burger okay cheeseburger and your intention is that you want to eat and you love eating you are a big foodie so that is your intention and attitude you are absolutely a food lover so it's absolutely fine with you so the behavior it could be that you will eat a burger but let's say subjective norms people think it's bad to eat junk food your family does not approve of it they are you know very they, they are against it that you are eating junk food you should be eating more healthy food and your your know, friends also discourage you for the same now here subjective norms are opposite they don't want you to eat so this might influence your behavior you might or you might not go out to eat a cheeseburger fourth is social norms this refers to the customary codes of behavior in a group or people or larger cultural context social norms are considered normative or standard in a group of people so basically what people want what a society society actually agrees to or disagrees to that has an effect on our intention as well as our behavior then fifth is perceived power this refers to the perceived presence of factors that may facilitate or impede performance of a behavior 
perceived power contributes to a person's perceived behavioral control over each of those factors and then six is perceived behavior control this refers to a person's perception of the ease or difficulty of performing the behavior of interest perceived behavior control varies across situations and actions which results in a person having varying perceptions of behavioral control depending on the situation this construct of the theory was added later and created the shift from the theory of reasoned action to the theory of planned behavior so like we already discussed that this was the added on on theory of planned behavior where people might think that even if i go to gym i don't think that gym is going to help me to lose weight or people you know what people are going to think or if i'm shy i might think that people are going to watch me doing the workout what if they laugh at me or make fun of me so there could be a lot of things and maybe that i'm not able to carry out this action so this is a perceived behavior control then let's do the evaluation of it uh, the this is important evaluation of the theory of planned behavior there are some 22 marker questions where you have to evaluate the theory so this is very important for the ib psychology students the theory has high predictive validity in various areas of health psychology including condom use exercise and diet however the efficiency of the theory varies between health related behavior categories on the other hand the theory is holistic taking into account both cognitive processes and social norms on the other hand the theory focuses too much on cognitive processes and does not address the role of emotion or the biological effects of of the drug themselves the theory does not address the question of internal versus external motivation it assumes that people make decision based on rational processes for example someone might have a very negative attitude towards drinking and little intention to drink and yet engage in drinking as one is seeking group membership most of the research is correlational making it impossible to establish a cause and effect relationship between cognitive processes and the behavior in addition this leads to the problem of bidirectional ambiguity a positive attitude may lead one to join a group or joining a group may lead one to have a more positive attitude about the group the theory has good predictive validity with regard to the initiation maintenance and discontinuation of behavior but it does not necessarily clearly address the question of addiction now like share and subscribe my channel because i'll be talking much more about psychology in general videos on ib psychology and on other boards as well you can even make a demand what kind of you know video you want me to put on like maybe uh, you know upload i mean you can talk about any question how to answer how to structure uh, you know the answer of a question or anything and i would be happy to upload a video for the same